What's going on, everyone? Welcome on into today's video. We're covering the unusual whales option profit calculator. It's a pretty cool thing if you are someone who is using the platform or you want to check it out and use this as your uh, option um, profit calculator because I think it does a pretty good job to make things pretty easy to visualize. So I'm going to go through some examples and show you guys, or at least an example, show you guys how this works so you can kind of get going. I'll leave a link to unusual whales in the video description box down below if you have not signed up or you want to check it out or whatever. Uh, and let's dive. So let's go into Tesla. Also, because it's a pretty volatile stock and it's a pretty interesting one right now as we're watching. So if I was to pull up Tesla, T-S-L-A, click on Tesla and give it a second, we've got Tesla. So I can go to the Tesla options flow, the analyst page, the profile. I don't need to do that stuff. Tesla, Tesla at 208, the price it's at right now. As I go down through, they're going to give me some pre-built setups if I'm looking to do different option strategies. So for example, if I was looking at a long call, and if you have a platform like a Robinhood or a Webull or other platforms, a lot of them have some of these different option strategies as kind of like templates to like set up and execute through your own trading. And actually we've got a pl plenty of videos uh, in the options playlist and down below and other different playlists we have on this channel already covering many, many different types of options. So if you're interested in, in, you know, what the heck is a call credit spread or a debit spread or all these different things, we've got videos for you already that we've made in the past. So check them out because it goes deeper into that stuff, strangles, straddles, all that. But I'll go through some examples here. So let's say I wanted to check this out and I wanted to click on this and I wanted to go long a call for Tesla, right? So now I've got the long call set up, okay? And they give you kind of an example. They kind of tell you what it is. You're buying the right to buy 100 shares of the underlying stock at the strike price, et cetera, right? So let's go through this. If I go into here, click on this again, now we can start building this out. And it, it could be confusing, okay? I understand it could be confusing, so we're going to try to simplify this down. Now, max profit, max loss, net debit. Now, a debit means I have to pay money out of my portfolio to do this. A credit means I'm going to get credited this money into my portfolio. And ideally, I want to buy it back for cheaper, or I can let it expire worthless if the option strategy allows you to do that. So that's an option. That's kind of what a debit versus a credit means. Just keep in mind what you're looking at here. So, okay, I can have a target price on or off, which will then allow me to, to target different price points, 2% or whatever from the current stock price that we're at. I can get rid of that if I want to. Uh, and it really comes down to your current you know, what you're looking for, I guess, at the end of the day. But a lot of stuff here. This is super confusing. So let's go back. Let's go back, okay? Click out of this. Let's go back here. Let's refresh this page, and let's start from scratch on Tesla. Go back to long call. Click it again. Now we're in here. Now we're in. So let's say I was looking at a strike price on Tesla that I wanted to buy, and I wanted to go ahead with a strike price that was out of the money. So Tesla's at 208, I'm gonna go for the 210 strike, and they tell you how far percentage-wise that is from the current price. So I'm looking at 210, okay? I'm gonna pick a contract date that I want, okay? So let's say I want to buy the February 24th, 2023, 15 days expiration is what that means right there, contracts of Tesla at 210. Boom. Click on that guy. I want to go long this guy. Okay. So now I've highlighted that. I'm clicking it. It says long. Go back, click out of this. Now it has specified this, the contract, okay, that I want. Next step will be how many do I want to buy? Because these are costing $10.83, that's going to cost me out of my pocket $1,083 plus commissions. Let's say I wanted to buy five of these guys. Now I've got five buys. It's going to cost me $5,400. Okay. It tells me the implied volatility, different Greeks to watch out for and pay attention to. Highly recommend you check out our other videos on the Greeks. If you guys are curious as to what some of those things mean. Now it gives me my max loss my max profit here is unlimited because obviously Tesla could technically go to infinity and beyond by the expiration date. So that's why it's unlimited. So now what it's going to do is it's going to show me, okay, a very crazy looking table uh, of Tesla based on where it currently trades. And if it goes higher, by what date? 
So right now I am filming this video. It's like February 9th. So the 24th is on the right-hand side. That's the farthest date. That's the expiration date. So if Tesla were to trade at 208.80 on that date, I'm going to lose 100% of my position. If Tesla were to trade at, let's say, 220, 220.80 on that date, I'm going to be up 0.3% on my position. Cool. And so, et cetera. So you can kind of see what that means uh, as where Tesla would go, buy certain times and whatever. Um, if I go to profit and loss instead of the percentage entry cost, if I go to profit and loss, that's just going to tell me what, on my position, am I up hundred? Like what, where would, if, if Tesla's at this price by this date at this time, you know, am I up? How, how much am I up? So it, it can back you into like building out a strategy that might work for you, right? Now, this part is let's go to profit and loss. A dollar amount might make more sense, easier to, to, to realize or to, to understand. So if Tesla is trading at $232 roughly by the 24th, I'm going to be up 6K, okay? Okay. If it's there by, let's say, the 15th, I'm going to be up 7.1K because there's also other factors like time and whatever that go into things. So it's a really cool calculator. I really highly recommend you utilize this, especially for those who are getting caught up in things like theta decay and the decay of options. You're like, oh man, I bought this. The stock's actually gone up or it's gone the way that I want it to go, but I'm down. Well, this is going to help explain that or visualize that because there are other things that go into the pricing of options that you got to be paying attention to. Okay. So that's that. Uh, here's the gross, the gross value is, is the gross value of the position that you have. Um, you paid, you know, 5.4 K. This is going to tell you what the value of that position would be at these price points by these dates. So that's cool. And I can adjust the date range I want to as well. And all that reset buttons that are available for you as well. Profit and loss chart. This is also very, very useful. Okay. Uh, I think Weeble has something similar and even Robin has something similar on the entry, on the order entry, depending upon what you're using or what you're looking at. So same kind of idea, but what you're going to do here is now this is showing you by the 24th, what your PNL would be. So you need Tesla to go 6.2% in your direction. I know it's very small, uh, or hit 220.83 for you to be break even on the date of expiration. But if I was to move this dial to, let's say the 17th of February, okay. To be break even, Tesla has to be at 214.46. So it can kind of give you a good gauge for like where you're at as time goes on and like where Tesla might need to be tracking for you to kind of stay break even or to stay on the positive side of this trade. You know, and, and maybe it tells you like, hey, when I want to take profits, when I want to cut my loss, etc. So this is again percentages by entry going off the entry cost. I can go to profit and loss, the same exact things I just looked at above. I can do here and it's in a graph form. Okay. So pretty straightforward, pretty simple to follow along. I mean, uh, I don't mean it in a, uh, if you're, if you're confused, like I, I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm just saying like, it's once you kind of get a look at this and you start playing around, it's, it's, and you have, an, and you understand options, it's actually pretty straightforward and it makes things actually really easy to, to look at, right? When you're like, okay, like, let's just make some sense. If this happens, like now what? And if, what if this happens by this date and all these different things, like it's actually pretty cool. So that's for a long call. Um, I can go back. Uh, if I want to go back, for example, and jump back to a different stock, for example, let's go to, I don't know, let's go to Apple, AAPL. And now let's see, I'm back to Tesla. I go to AAPL, click on the actual drop down menu. Now I go to Apple. Let's say for Apple, oh, I'm in the long call. I want to go back to the other, I want to go back to the other page. I want to go back to toggle strategies to pick a different strategy. So let's see if I can go to a different strategy. This is a short call, go forward, long put, short put, call credit spread. Let's go for like, I'm gonna see if I can find a strangle or yeah, here's a strangle. Here's an Apple strangle. So what's an Apple strangle? An Apple strangle is a two part strategy where I'm gonna be buying a call and a put as they're showing me down here. And I can pick which strikes I wanna buy. And essentially what I need to do is, or what I want is I want volat I want Apple to move in a direction. I'm just not sure which way right? These are really good strategies to play off of like CPI reports or FOMC meetings with some time. Um, if we get big moves, the options will be expensive going in, into those things, but these could be pretty good strategies to play off of those events. Or if we've been kind of consolidating on a stock or on, let's say the overall market for a couple of days or a couple of weeks, and we haven't moved too much, it might make sense to play something like this. Could be, could be at a tipping point. 
big catalysts coming up, data releases, whatever. And it could be useful to play something like this and to get yourself some exposure to both ways, right? I think I do this myself a lot when it comes to the overall market when we have been consolidating for a while or, a, you know, for example, you know, we've got a nice move up and we kind of could be sitting at a resistance or either going to break that resistance or we're going to reject and go down very nicely. I could play a strangle or a straddle. Um, so a strangle is a situation where you're buying two different contracts. So I'm buying, let's say, and in this case, an Apple 155 and a 147 put and Apple's like kind of right in between. So like you are essentially going to lose money here if Apple ends up nowhere, if, if Apple ends up in between this range or outside this range by like a dollar or by $2 here because that's how much I'm paying for these contracts. So like before I can go in here and I can change the strike price, click on the option, change the strike price if I want to uh, and pick a different range, but I'll just use what they give me so far. And so we can pretty much see that using this table might be a little more confusing, but what you need to see is that like essentially Apple like hovering around our strike price you know, is not making money, but big move up, make money or big move down, make money. And to what targets? Obviously the, the farther down and the farther up we go, the more money you make on this strategy. The profit and loss chart looks like this, and it gives you the two price points that we need to see for you to break even. So with this strategy, Apple needs to move over five and a half percent in essentially either direction, 5.6 down or 5.3 up for you to break even. Might be a lot, but let's say that there's a CPI report coming out or there's, you know, some data coming out where Apple has earnings. You know what I mean? Like this might make sense. Obviously, before these events, option prices, you know, they're generally pretty juicy. They're priced up and their premiums are pretty high. But again, if we get outlier moves, these will still pay. They will still pay. So you got to be careful and weigh the benefits and the risk reward here because what if, let's say, nothing happens in this time span and Apple is at 150 you could be in trouble. Always recommend buying more time, although it'll be more expensive. And at the same time, maybe not, or maybe cap or limit your upside potential. It's going to be safer if you were to buy some more time. So that's how to use the options calculator in a nutshell. Hopefully it's helpful. It's useful. I highly, it's, it's, it's one of the best out there. Once you look at it a couple of times, get a feel for it and start to understand how to use it, mess around with it. I think it's very, very helpful and can be very useful in your own trading and investing. We'll leave a link to Unusual Whales in the video description box down below. Any other links, resources are also down below. Thanks so much for watching. Thumbs up button. Consider subscribing here to the channel. And we'll see you guys in a future video. Peace.